thanks for watching. And previously on Captain Pi America, I showed you how to change coordinates, meaning going from one coordinate system to the other one. We are with this very easy change of coordinates matrix. And now today I wanna do something even cooler. I wanna change matrices. So suppose you have a certain basis and with a matrix of a linear transformation and suddenly you're like, I hate this basis, I want another basis, then it turns out we can go from one matrix of a linear transformation to another one very easily. So here's the setting. Suppose, again, V is a vector space and beta and gamma are bases of your vector space of V and T is a linear transformation from V to itself. It's what's called a linear operator. It's like a smooth operator. So it's a linear transformation. And suppose we are given the matrix of T with respect to beta. Suppose the matrix of T let's say where the input basis is beta and the output basis is beta is given. And I will give you a concrete example at the end. So suppose we have this old matrix. The question is, how do we find a new matrix? Go find T from gamma to gamma. And it turns out you can write this in terms of what's called change of coordinates matrices. And I would like to remind you of a thing I talked in a previous video. So recall, there's something called the change of coordinates matrix. Q, so like QD, uh, which is Q from beta to gamma, has a property that if you take any vector x, and you want to evaluate it with respect to the new coordinates, you just take the old coordinates and multiply it by this matrix Q. And again, the awesome thing is, this way it's very easy to remember the formula, you just follow the arrows. So you go from right to left. Okay, and using this formula, we can actually derive this change of coordinate, the change of matrix formula, if you want. Because here's the derivation. So consider the following. And again, I came up with this proof. I was very excited. It was like, uh, to be honest, a shower thought, but uh, it was, yeah. Anyway, so consider <laughs> the following thing. Uh, T of X. So this is a vector, right, in V. In particular, we can evaluate this with respect to the new coordinates. And again, where x in V is arbitrary. Well, on the one hand, we can use the new matrix of T. So on the one hand, we have the following. By definition of t with gamma and gamma, if you calculate t of x, this vector, it equals to the matrix of t from gamma to gamma times the vector x. And this is just the definition of this. We, we have the matrix this, this new matrix such that precisely this equality holds. So, on the other hand, we have this vector, t of x, but we just evaluate this with respect to the new coordinates. Therefore, we can just use the change of coordinates formula. So, in particular, what this says is the vector t of x with respect to the new coordinates, that's equal to q times the vector t of x, with respect to the old coordinates from beta. And that's from Q from beta to gamma, which from now on we'll just abbreviate as Q. So it's Q times T of X beta. But look, now we can just use the same trick as here. 
This is Q times the old matrix of T times X beta. So Q, T beta beta, and then X beta. And again, that's just the definition of the old matrix of T. Finally, notice here we have an X gamma, but ideally we would also like to have an X gamma. But that's not a big problem because x gamma is q times x beta. So x beta is q inverse times x gamma. So this jump then becomes q t beta beta and then q inverse x gamma. And this is wonderful because what do we have? Those two terms are equal. So the new matrix of t applied really to this arbitrary vector equals Q T, old matrix of T Q inverse applied to the same vector. So in particular, because this holds for every X, we do get that the new matrix of T equals Q old matrix Q inverse. This is our new formula. And in fact, notice we have this new uh, matrix equals Q times old matrix Q inverse. This is what in math we call similar. So those two matrices are similar. In other words, to change bases with matrices, you just uh, use a similarity transformation. And you may or may not have seen this when you did diagonalization. So A is diagonalizable if and only if it's similar to a diagonal matrix. Okay, now let me just give an example to end the day. Consider the following linear transformation. T from F2 to F2, where T of xy is 3x minus y and x plus 3y. And I would like to emphasize here, those could be arbitrary vector spaces. So it could be polynomials to polynomials, and you have an abstract linear transformation. But just to make it concrete, let's consider it if you want R2 to R2. Then, let's start with some one basis. Suppose you're given the matrix of T with respect to the following basis. 2, 4, and 3, 1. Then it turns out we can show that the matrix of T with respect to beta, it's simply 4 minus 2, 1, 2. And if you want, let me illustrate, for example, how to get the first column. Well, if you apply T to the first vector, 2, 4, by definition, it's 3 times 2 minus 4, and then 2 plus 3 times 4, and that's equal to so 6 minus 4, that's 2, and then 2 plus 12, it's 14. And you can indeed check that it's equal to 4 times 2, 4, plus minus 2, if you want, times 3, 1. And indeed, you know, 4 times 2 is 8, minus 2 times 3 is 6. So 8 minus 6 is 2, and then 4 times 4 is 16, minus 2 times 1 is 14. And what this tells you is the first column of your matrix, it's 4 minus 2. And you can repeat that with the other vector, 3, 1, and you find 1, 2. All right, now suppose you have this matrix, and suddenly you're like, ah, I don't really like this basis. Here's a cooler basis. So suppose I give you the following, gamma is 1, 1, 1 minus 1. The question is, suppose your boss asks you to calculate the new matrix of T. Well, then technically it would be a pain. It means evaluate T at those vectors, express them in terms of those vectors, and same for this one. Especially annoying if you don't know what the formula is. 
So it's possible that your boss is just like, well, here's the old matrix. I don't remember what T is. But fortunately, it's using the formula we have now, it's very easy to calculate the new matrix. Just do Q, T, beta, beta, Q inverse, where Q is the change of coordinates matrix from beta to gamma, and in a previous video, I calculated that to be 3 minus 1, 2, 1. So what this then becomes, it's 3, 2, minus 1, 1, times the old matrix, 4, 1, minus 2, 2, times 3, 2, minus 1, 1, inverse. This inverse you can calculate, the inverse of A, B, C, D is 1 over A, D minus B, C, times D minus B minus C, A. And if you do this whole junk, you get 3 minus 1, 1, 3. This is the new matrix of T, and again, strictly speaking, at no point did we calculate what T is. So you can start with this matrix and directly go to this other matrix. And notice in particular, this is much nicer than this one. It's, uh, well, not quite symmetric, but pretty. It's almost like rotation or something. But what is that telling you? What this tells you is, if your new coordinates, by the way, are uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1 minus 1. Then in those new coordinates, t becomes, so if, you want, if this is the new x prime and this is the new y prime, then t of x prime, y prime is just this matrix times x prime, y prime. So 3x prime plus y prime and minus x prime plus 3y prime. So if you identify your new coordinates as your new axes, then what this linear transformation t does, it does 3x prime plus y prime and minus x prime plus 3y prime. That's what it looks like. And in particular, sometimes it's extremely simplified. If it's diagonalizable, it just means that it stretches it in one axis and stretches it in the other axis, which is really cool. All right, I hope you like this extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.